Hey everybody, and welcome back. This one I'm excited about. This is the final culmination of a lot of work that was put into the new LGK 2.0 drivers and the new kit that we've just offered here. They come in these great looking little boxes. This is it. This is the final version, the final driver. We've gone through probably 20 different prototypes and iterations of trying different things to take this little driver as far as we could possibly take it and it really turned out fantastic so we've put together a little kit it's somewhat of a little desktop speaker and it's it's perfect for the desktop application but also ideal for a situation where you're listening in the near field or you're in a really small room and you just want great sound. These things are really delivering the great sound. I mean, lower vocal region up, these things are phenomenal. I've even brought some guys in, um, some buddies, blindfolded them, set them down in the listening room here with these things pretty far out into the room and perfectly dialed into a set of triple servo subs. <laughs> yeah, six 12 inch servo subs, three for each side in an open baffle, just blended in seamlessly to where you wouldn't think there's a subwoofer in the room. And playing along with these little three inch full range drivers to create a massive full range sound. And it's amazing, the the, the total presentation, when, I, when my buddy took uh, the blindfold off, he was astonished to see the little LGKs, a three inch full range driver, I really shouldn't say four inch driver. It's a three inch wide band driver covering from 80 hertz and up and they do it fantastically. I'm, I just can be more happy with it. So we put together a kit. Uh, the kit comes with, of course, a pair of drivers. This is the crossover parts for one. Uh, I really shouldn't say crossover parts. It's the filter for one using all the good quality parts. Some of the uh, air core inductors, the sonic cap, Couple of resistors. There's there's a little notch filter at the very top to bring down a little peak and flatten it out. You get all high purity copper wiring, uh, heat shrink, tube connectors, screws, everything you need to build these things out. Two hundred seventy nine dollars. That's it. Two hundred seventy nine dollars. A phenomenal sound and pair of speakers. And we've got a lot of options here as far as cabinets and flat packs and just about everything you want or need to build out a pair we've kind of made it easy for you and let's start with the flat pack i'm going to move this stuff out of the way this is going to be a trick to move all this around and show you this stuff flat packs come all cnc cut out of a high density fiber board and the back panel has a removable section there to where you can access the inside of the cabinet. And once this thing's put together out of three quarter inch material, it is a little tank. It is heavy and solid. Here's one that we've just, I've just stuck them together here. There's nothing holding this thing together. Um, so it's gonna fall apart if I'm not careful. As you can see, the driver mounts there on the front. It's got a port that exits out the back. It's got a radius on both sides of the port. There's the big opening in the back for a removable panel so you can reach in after you've assembled the network and install it there on the back side. Uh, there's cutouts there on the back for tube connectors. And yes, there are tube connectors. So all of that made super easy. And I wanna say the flat pack is, uh, I think it's a hundred bucks for the flat pack all CNC cut. And then the cabinets fully assembled, I believe are 200. Um, you know, I better double check that. Let me, let me check what I got written down here. That is correct. Yeah, the completed cabinets are 200 and the finished ones in a nice veneer. And you've got some choices of veneers that are 450 and they are nice. Kalian, who works for us here at GR Research, of course, he's kind of spun himself off and bought CNC equipment and has been cutting flat packs for all of our kits and doing a fantastic job. The veneer work that he does on these things are just phenomenal. They're just beautiful. And there's quite a few finishes available. 
This one was one that Hobbs that works for us. Hobbs also uh, built out a pair. This is the pair we are one of the pair we've been listening to, and this is this same flat pack with the top edge rounded off, and it's just roller coated in Duratex. He also kind of taped off a section here and did a really deep flat black versus a more of a semi gloss on the sides. Pretty cool look. Uh, you guys can get creative, do anything like that you want. Uh, we're also going to offer some some of these things completely assembled, finished, and ready to go. Um, I'll back up though, and I'll hit the question that a lot of you were thinking when I talked about the filter that goes on these things. And you're thinking, so it's a full range driver, right? Why does it have a filter? Any full range or wide band driver that you use and you put into a box like this is going to need a corrective filter. Now the reason being is as frequency decreases the low frequency tends to wrap around and go the opposite direction. The lowest frequencies are completely omnidirectional so part of the output is going to the back of the room, part of the output is coming to the front of the room and you're losing that output that's going away from you. So you have what's called baffle step loss, where it loses output. So we go in and we put a filter on it that compensates for that step loss and creates a nice flat response. So the parts are necessary and anytime, anytime you take any wide band driver like this and put it in a small box, you're gonna have step loss and you have to compensate for it. There's just no way around it. You can't take a wide band driver that you can get from wherever and just plop it in a box and think you don't need a filter because it's a wide band driver. You always need a filter. And we've noticed with playing these in house here, if you really want to bring the volume levels up on them a little bit, we, we recommend putting a little inline filter in line with your amplifier to roll the bottom end off so that if any low frequency reaches these things, it doesn't just bottom them out because there is a limited amount of power that these things can handle. Now thermally, they can take quite a bit of power, just like most of your tweeters and things out there. But mechanically, there is a limit to how far this thing can travel and how much air it can move because it's a small driver. I would say without a filter on it, you've got a maximum of about 25 to 30 watt peaks with normal music input and that's it. And you still may run out of X max if you start beating on them with some low frequency information. If you put an inline filter on them like we've done, uh, you can just about double that, you know, 50 to 60 watt max input, max peak input, and they'll handle that just fine. Again, you just don't want to overdrive them in the lowest frequency range. Now as a desktop speaker and they're sitting right, right in front of you, 10, 12 watts of power may be all you ever need because they'll be plenty loud because they're right in front of you. So you may not have to worry about filtering the bottom off of them or how much low end excursion they're going to be seeing or anything like that. It's no big deal. But you move them into a bigger room, you're going to exceed the limits of the driver pretty easily if you're not careful. So I'm giving you guys kind of a general rule of thumb of how much power you can put on those. That's something we typically don't do with any of our other speakers because with most of our speakers, they'll they'll handle a tremendous amount of power so long as the amplifier is not clipping, so long as it's clean power. We don't really care how much power you put on them. You can use a 800 watt amp, a 1000 watt amp, a 600 watt amp or whatever. As long as you're not overdriving it, you're feeding them clean power. Most of our designs are going to eat that up just fine. Um, but anytime you're overdriving an amplifier, like a, a receiver or something like that, those tend to clip pretty hard. And that's usually how drivers are destroyed. It's, it's usually not from clean power. But in this case, we're kind of setting you guys some guidelines as far as limits so you don't wind up overdriving these things. Um, let's look at the frequency response measurement on this thing. The on-axis frequency response. Whew, man, beautiful. This thing's smooth. Oh, it's smooth. And it sounds that smooth. Um, the the off-axis response, and this could be horizontal or vertical, is smooth as well. It just drops off easily in the off-axis. As you know, as you start getting into bigger and bigger drivers, it, they're going to start dropping off pretty quickly in the off axis because anytime you're playing a frequency range where the wavelength is shorter than the diaphragm, it's going to be in what we call a beaming frequency. It's a beaming range where it's only playing forward 
and if you get off axis that's going to drop off so in the top octave or two as you can see from the measurement it's going to start dropping off as you start moving off axis that can be not that big of a of a negative it can be a positive if you're in a situation where you don't want that high frequency reflecting immediately right off of something in a wideband driver like this that's this big in diameter it'll drop off rather quickly compared to a tweeter so not that big of a problem now as you start getting into bigger drivers that are wideband drivers it becomes a significant problem as the off axis really drops off as you move just a little bit off axis but in this case this thing's it's phenomenal and with the small amount of surface area around the baffle and the rounded edges like this there's there's not much surface area there to cause any kind of reflection so you're not really hearing a lot playing from that surface forward it becomes more transparent a lot quicker than a speaker that has a wider front baffle so they're really transparent sounding oh they sound fantastic and let's look at the spectral decay spectral decay on this thing whoo buddy it's clean when you start talking about moving masses that are this light and this small the settling time is really quick so things like in the vocal region not only is it a smooth and natural sound but there's not a lot of overshoot going on there it settles quickly and it's clean super clean um, the impedance response is fairly smooth as well it's still considered an 8 ohm speaker drops around 6 ohms um, easy load for you to drive with anything and right now we're pretty good on inventory on all these parts so we shouldn't have a hold up on getting stuff out and you can order it and we'll try to make it to where you can order it with these different flat pack options assembled cabinets and fully assembled cabinets with veneer and there'll be those options also for uh, for it to be completely assembled and ready to play so look for that coming too and I appreciate you guys watching the videos this one I'm really proud of this was a lot of development work to get this thing to the level that we're we're at with it and I can't wait for all you guys to get a hold of these and start listening to them because I know you're gonna love them because we're loving them here in our listening room that's it for this one and I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me on the development on this I know it took a while but it's here it's ready and you can order it thanks for watching the video See you in the next one.